Welcome to chapter 14, section 2. We're going to be talking about thin lenses. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve problems using the thin lens equation. And we are going to calculate the magnification of a lens. I want you guys to notice we're not really covering pages 503 to 505. And we'll have a separate um, discussion where we actually use ray diagrams to find the position of an image, but we are going to talk about the images produced by converging and diverging lens and how to identify it as real or virtual. So first, the lens is just any transparent object that refracts light waves, causing them to converge or diverge to create an image. So the word diverge means to spread apart. So you can see a little bit here, this lens here causes the light to bend out in different directions. Can converge means to come together. So here these light rays are kind of coming together. So looking at it a little more closely then, here you can see it more clearly. This is a diverging lens because all the rays go apart. And this is a converging lens because all the rays come together. So here's just kind of an example when you look through lenses you can create different kinds of images. You can create an image where it looks smaller and further away or where it looks bigger. But we can't necessarily tell which kind of image each, or which kind of lens each of these is unless we know a little more information. So just like mirrors, lenses create virtual and real images also. And lenses also have focal points. So we can use ray diagrams or and the lens equation to find the location of images and their magnification. But right now, we're going to look at um, ray diagrams in a separate video. So now we're going to look at the lens equation first. So this is the lens equation. And it's similar to the one for a mirror, but we didn't really talk about it when we went over mirrors. So what we need to remember is that P here is the distance of the object. Q is the image distance from the lens, okay? And then F, F is our focal length, okay? So this is called the thin lens equation, and we use the word thin specifically because it only works for thin lenses, like your eyeglasses, okay? And a lens is considered thin when its thickness is much smaller than its focal length. So just kind of to give an example, you could have a lens right, that is very barely curved, and maybe its focal length is here, but maybe the lens is this thick, right? So the focal length is inside of the lens, so that would not be a thin lens. A thin lens would be a lens that has a focal length, maybe it's more curved like this, and its focal length is way over here, okay? But the lens is like that, and so the focal point there is outside of the lens, and it's far away compared to how thick this lens is. Okay. So that's what a thin lens is. So when we're using this, we need to think about what the sign conventions are, which means when we talk about P, and when we talk about Q, and when we talk about F, what locations are we talking about? Okay. So, and what are their signs going to be? So if this is our lens, whether it's converging or diverging, okay, in this case it doesn't matter. If we're talking about F, Whenever we have a converging lens, F is positive, and we say it's on this side. And if we have a diverging lens, we have a negative F, on a, and it's on this side. Okay, so positive F is converging, and a negative F is a diverging lens. And these signs represent which side of the lens we would consider that focal point to be on. The next thing we want to look at is Q. Now remember, Q is our object dis or excuse me, our image distance, right? So Q is the image. Let's write this up here so we remember. Okay. And Q is going to be the opposite. Whenever we get a negative Q, it's going to be on this side, and positive Qs will be behind the lens. And whenever we have a negative Q, this is a virtual image. So if ever our answer gives us a negative Q, we know it's virtual, and a positive Q is a real image. The last thing, P, is where we put our object, and then we go back to the same sign as the focal point. So if the object is in front of the lens, it's positive, and if it's behind the lens, it is negative. So those are really important things to remember as we do the lens, and specifically we need to remember that the sign for Q is opposite of what it is for F and P. 
so now, uh, the next thing we need to talk about is the type of images created. And you guys did this in lab, so hopefully it will be a little bit familiar, but I created this table for you to help you remember. Okay, so we're looking at a converging lens. Okay, we have a whole bunch of different possible images created. Okay, and the first three, whether you are outside of F, at 2F, or outside of 2F, okay, you get all of those end up being real images. Okay, and they are all inverted. So you get real inverted for all of these. It's just the size that changes. Okay, so I did these shapes and the color to help us remember that. So outside of 2F gives us is the triangle if you're there, or if you're at 2F, or if you are between F and 2F. All are real inverted, and it just changes the side. So all of those create images then that will be over here with a positive Q value. Okay. Now, if we're looking at ones that create virtual, like our little square here, if we go inside the focal point of a converging lens, then we end up with a virtual, upright, and reduced image, which means that our image is over here on the same side as our object. Okay, And it turns out that will always be true for diverging lenses also. Diverging lenses only create virtual images. Okay, They're always upright, and they're always reduced unless you're inside the focal point, and then they can be enlarged. Okay. So hopefully these colors help make it a little bit clearer and help you remember the different types of images created by the locations of different objects. So now let's do an example where we use the lens equation to calculate something. So I already wrote the lens equation up here for us. It's right here. And then we can also use the magnification equation. It's the exact same as we used it before for mirrors. So if we're doing this, we've got an object placed at 20 centimeters. So our object is P. Okay, and it's in front of a converging lens, so it's going to be a positive value. Okay, and then it has a focal length of 10 centimeters. So it's a converging lens, so this is also a positive value. Okay, and we're going to find the image distance Q. Okay, and then we're going to describe that image. So if I plug in our numbers, I'm going to get 1 over 20 plus 1 over Q equals 1 over 10. So Q will equal 1 divided by 1 over 10 minus 1 over 20, which gives us Q equal to 20. Okay, And that fits what we learned in lab and what we just described, because P is at 2 times our focal point, right? 20 is 2 times 10. So our image should be on the opposite side. Remember, if Q is positive, it's behind the lens. Okay. And now, let's use this equation and see whether it's inverted, upright, or real. So we don't know the heights here, so I'm going to use the negative Q over P1, right? So I'm going to get negative 20 is our Q, 20 is our P, so we're going to end up with negative 1. And just like when we talked about with mirrors 2, a negative sign for M means it's upright and virtual. Upright and virtual. And a positive sign means that it is real and inverted. I said these totally backwards. Sorry, this is positive and this one is negative. So negative is real and inverted. And we did get a negative sign. So this image is real and inverted. And because it's one, it means it's not bigger or smaller. It's the same size. So this gave us the same size image. So now you should be able to plug in any values for P, Q, or F and find the answers and be able to determine whether it is enlarged or reduced, real or inverted. So the last thing is I just want to point out a little bit because this is very connected to how eyes work. So when your eye has a natural lens in it, okay, and it's kind of the clear part of your eye that is round on the surface, okay, and what that is, is that is a lens. That's a, a biological lens. And our eyes are a converging lens. So what it does is it causes the light rays to converge from what we see, and they form on the back of our eye. And this point right here where they all meet, it should hit exactly the back of your eye. But depending on whether you're farsighted or nearsighted, um, the le your lens doesn't correctly locate the image on the back of your eye. So if you're farsighted, it locates it further back. And if you're nearsighted, it doesn't even bring it to the back of your eye. And so that's why we wear glasses. Okay? So people who are farsighted use converging lenses to correct it okay? because that brings it closer in. 
Okay, and people who are nearsighted, which is most people in Taiwan typically, most of you have diverging lenses because it needs to actually spread the rays out a little bit more so that it can bring them all the way to the back of your eye. So you should in general know which type of lens is used to correct which type of eyesight. So that brings us to the end of our first part of section 14. We'll go over ray diagrams a little later. And let me know if you have any questions in class. See you there.